is going to be my most OCD rifle build yet, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Gavin Gee here from ultimatereloader.com. I have been working my way up to the pinnacle of rifle builds. We're talking about an insane benchrest build. This rifle, I hope, is gonna be the most accurate rifle I've ever built, I've ever owned. It's gonna be absolutely fabulous. This is gonna be chambered in 6.5x47 Lapua. If you didn't already see it, you're gonna to wanna to see my warm up lap when I built a UNTOP Precision Upper 10 barrel for 6.5x47 using some of this same tooling. This is gonna be a series. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the barrel work, but I'm also gonna step back for a moment to give you kind of an overview of what this build is gonna be about, some of the components and some of the tools that are gonna be used. This build is centered around a BAT Model B action. This is a very popular bench rest action. It's got a load port on one side, it's got an ejection port on the other side, it's got an integrated Picatinny rail, this is absolutely the pinnacle of precision. And if you're curious about Bat Machine, the company that makes this action, you're gonna to wanna to check out my How It's Made custom rifle action video where I go to the factory and I talk to Bruce and he guides me through the entire process from start to finish. So that's the action. I've also got a set of Bat 34 millimeter rings. I'm currently shopping for a scope, so stay tuned on that. I've got a Bixen Andy Remington 700 trigger that goes down to one ounce. Now we're talking. This is from Bullet Central. They're the exclusive US importer distributor for Bix and Andy here in the US. I've got a Krieger barrel. This is a four groove. It's 27 inches, I believe, the blank itself. So I'll probably finish it at around 26 inches. Haven't decided what I'm gonna do on the muzzle yet, but by the end of this video, of course, I will. Either 11 degree target crown or 5 8 by 24 threaded. I might start with the target crown and then thread it for muzzle accessories later. We will see. We've also got the Wheeler Accuracy LRB stock. This thing is absolutely insane. It's fiberglass, it's got the steerable rudder, it's got a metal butt pad on it. It's got a four inch wide bag rider integrated right into the stock. The fore end has this four inch width. This thing is really cool. And what will be fun about this is this will be the first time in a future video where I do a complete inletting job. Inletting for the action, all of the different features, the bolt handle, the trigger slot, all of that, and then also inlet for the barrel channel. So I've talked with Alex Wheeler over at Wheeler Accuracy. He's the guy that makes and sells these stocks, and he's given me some tips. I've also talked to the guys at Bat Machine about all of the different steps that are required to make this absolutely a perfect fit with the Bat Model B action. So I've got a couple cutting tools here for the milling machine. I've got the Precision Matthews PM949 TV I'll be using for that. And then again, I'll be using some of the Treble gun tools. The Treble is from Germany. You saw these in the 65x47 Lapua upper build video. I've got a min-spec chamber reamer minus the throater. I've got a separate throater here. I've got a proprietary depth stop that I put together for that. I've got go and no-go gauges. And of course, it wouldn't be complete if I didn't have the instructions. This is the tenon print for the Bat Model B action. It also works with some of their other actions. So by the time I'm done with this, you're not going to believe what this thing is going to look like. I've got some pretty crazy plans that you're going to want to stick around for. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications. I'm off to do some barrel work and I will be back to tell you all about it and to guide you through the process and talk about the different steps I went through to chamber this barrel, to do all the tenon work and to do anything I do on the muzzle end. So I will see you in a little bit. So fast forward to now and we've got the barrel work complete. Like the other Recent builds that you've seen here on the channel, I'm using the Precision Matthews PM1440 GT All Taiwanese Precision Lay. This is a great piece of equipment for these kinds of precision builds. I'm using chambering rifles for accuracy. This was a collaboration between Gordy Gritters and Fred Zaglin. This was just like the job that I did for this Uintah Precision 
upper 10. This is an AR-10 bolt action upper. I've already published the story where I did the barrel work here. This was somewhat of a trial run for this job. And what that enabled me to do was to do calculations for things like what kind of free bore I needed to run with the separate treble throater and to basically do an initial passive load development. We were shooting down in the threes with this rifle, which is really good for a hybrid AR platform. What I'm gonna do when I talk through this machining and the chambering process here is focus on the things I did that were a little different this time than what I've shown again and again and again on the channel. So I started on the breech end, and I'll have to say, this was one of the smoothest dialing jobs that I've ever done. I started by dialing the muzzle end on the outboard side and the breech end to within about a half thousandth. And I did my pre-drill, and the pre-drill enabled me to get the nose of the mid-toyo tenth indicator into the critical section of the bore, right? Right where the throat is gonna be and about an inch ahead of that. And with the true bore alignment system, I was able to dial to within about one to two ten thousandths of an inch in probably about five minutes or so. It was so close when I started, I was a little shocked actually. So following that, I turned the tenon down to diameter. I created my thread relief, which is a little bit larger for this than what's shown on the print from Bat Machine. The reason for that was I threaded at a higher RPM because I did a test pass to see what would give best surface finish. I found in that four to 500 RPM range gave the best surface finish. And at that speed, you need a little bit more time to disengage the half nut levers between each successive pass. This is an inch and a 16th diameter and 18 threads per inch. That went smooth, and then following that, I clocked the action onto the barrel. And what that involves is on the outboard end, looking while the barrel is perfectly set up for that machining operation, where the muzzle is gonna point up or down. And to cut the shoulder back just a little bit until the action clocks where the barrel will be pointing either up or down. If it's a real long range rifle, you're gonna probably want it pointing up to get a little bit more elevation. This is a mostly 100 yard bench rest test platform. So I think mine was pointing down. I calculated how much I needed to cut. I took two different cuts to inch up to where it would be just shy of that perfect clocking, knowing that when I torqued it down, it would come up to the perfect orientation. At this point, I started doing the chambering and the chambering went pretty well. I've got this, this adapter that I've got for the metric, 12 millimeter shank, treble, body, and neck reamer. Again, we have the separate throater to go to 7 16 so I'm using the Gratan fixed holder there. Uh, but what I realized was, how am I gonna check my headspace? Because this is a cone breech, and when you've got a cone breech, you have to get the nose of the bolt into place with the action and with the go gauge in place in order to check to see where you're at in terms of your chamber depth. It's just like if you need to cut a counterbore, you have to do that before you finish the chambering operation. So I went back and I cut the cone. Now this is my first cone breech cut like this because it's the first non-repeater that I've built. And these are typically used for non-repeaters. I found it was really easy. I had a discussion with Gordy Gritters from the Extreme Accuracy Institute and Gordy's Precision. And he told me, well, it's basically kind of like your final checks on your head spacing. So I put the compound over to 25 degrees, which is what these are cut at. I cut it a bit knowing that I had a bit to go. And then with the bolt in place, I threaded the action on and then I was left where it stopped, where the bolt nose was stopped against the cone. And the gap between the receiver and the shoulder on the barrel told me exactly how far I'd need to go to have zero tolerance. And what you want is seven to eight thousandths of tolerance, an air gap between the bolt nose and the cone. So with the saddle DRO, the Z-axis DRO, I was able to keep track of that very precisely. I cut my seven thousandths of an inch in from that zero tolerance and Everything should be absolutely perfect. Then I went back to chambering and worked my way up 
This time I used a little bit of a different methodology with the Uintah Precision. I went two thousandths too deep, now I'm gonna have about two thousandths of crush when I tighten that barrel extension on. This is a custom action of the highest magnitude of precision and we've got a custom barrel job. So we're gonna have less crush when the receiver tightens down against the barrel. So I only went about one thousandth beyond the go gauge. And what I'll do is, we're gonna check this. We're gonna see with the go gauge and with the go gauge plus two thousandths of scotch tape on the back of it, if we get go with the go gauge and no go with that two thousand. That's a very tight tolerance to hold. With the Uintah Precision Rifle, I think I ended up with about a half thou over the go gauge, which is, is perfect, and I'd like to match that if I can so that uh, we can get things really close between the two rifles and fire form brass and so on and so forth. So after the main portion of the chambering for the body and the neck, it was time to get out the throating reamer. This is another treble reamer. These are six flute reamers and a, this is a four groove Krieger barrel. So that's a good combination uh, in terms of minimizing chatter. And in the last video and article, I talked about a depth stop that I made from a drill depth stop so that I could monitor my progress in terms of that throating depth, the cut. And I used the same dummy cartridge. This is optimized so that the bearing surface of the bullet, the rear bearing surface, is ahead of the neck shoulder junction so that we don't have the donut which will form causing inconsistency problems with our ignition and so on and so forth. So I cut that and I cut it 10 thousandths beyond where we're going to be so we'd have 10 thousandths jump approximately when, when we're uh, seeding a bullet to this uh, particular depth. And that also went really well. The throat looks really nice. I looked with my Hawkeye bore scope. Very shiny, very consistent all the way around. At this point, the breech end is basically done. We've got our threads, we've got our shoulder, we've got the cone breech, the chamber, the throat. It was just a matter at this point of taking some sandpaper and polishing things and knocking off some edges. Then it was time to go to the muzzle end. I'm starting here with an 11 degree target crown. Again, I'm using the true bore alignment system. It uses a six jaw chuck. So this time I was very careful to calculate the barrel taper. I took four inches, I took two diameters, calculated the taper, and then I had just ordered some shim stock from MSC cut off a strip and that worked perfectly. When I tightened that six jaw chuck down, it brought the breech end on the outboard side of the lathe into perfect alignment with my spider. I was, I was really amazed and it was very, very solid. So I used the new SSG range rod. This uses an inner and outer pilot with a brass spacer. That goes right into the muzzle ends and that makes it a little quicker to dial things in. Basically with the true bore alignment system, you want to get your radial error out first and then you work on your axial. So again, within about five, maybe seven minutes, I had the muzzle end dialed plenty good for a target crown. Cut the target crown, checked to make sure everything was good and did a quick polish, knocked the edge off the end of the barrel where I had trimmed it down. At this point, we are ready. We're ready to take this action and we're ready to spin it on, torque it down, and check our head space. And again, this is one of these things where this is very, very exacting work and you never know exactly what that crush is gonna be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the barrel in the barrel vise and we will tighten it down just like that. Check with our head space gauge with and without that scotch tape and hope things line right. Let's do this. So I got the barrel tightened down really good in this barrel vise. One thing I learned from Gordy Gritters is don't be bashful about torquing these bolts down. You don't want the barrel to spin. I've also got some TW25B. This is fully synthetic grease that is really good for the tenon threads. The guys at Bat Machine are really uh, big on this stuff and it's worked really well for me for everything from you know action threads all the way to muzzle threads. So we're gonna take the action, it's all clean. I cleaned off the shoulder and spin that on. OK, 
Okay, now I've got a special internal action wrench from BAT. Carefully put that on. Okay, and this just uses a 5 8 socket. And I'm gonna check where I'm at. I'm at about 90 foot pounds, that should work. I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten that on. That's it. Okay, so I'm gonna loosen things up. We're gonna spin this around and then we're gonna check our headspace. So I spun this around so that the ejection port is kind of facing up. That's gonna put our extractor in the right spot to drop the go gauge in. All right, so here's one moment of truth. The handle should go down as it does. Okay. Now, and this is an excerpt from uh, Gordy Gritter's week-long precision rifle building class. We're gonna take scotch tape, which I've checked, it does indeed measure two thousandths of an inch in thickness. I'm gonna trim this around so that we've basically got a shim of two thousandths of an inch on the back. Most no-go gauges are actually four thousandths longer than the go gauge. And we wanna hold a tighter tolerance here for go and no-go. So let's see what happens now. <laughs> Yeah. What does that mean? That means that we've held our headspace on the chambering job to within two thousandths of an inch. And I'm guessing we're gonna be just barely over this go gauge if we had gauges in between. So, success. Well, there it is. The 6.5x47 bench rest barreled action with this BAT Model B action. I'll have to say I'm not feeling overly patient when it comes to firing this rifle, but it's gonna take a little while. This concludes part one. Part two is gonna be some of the work I'm gonna to do to this stock to get it ready for paint. And that includes inletting for the action. It includes inletting, barrel channel relieving for the barrel. I'm gonna be doing some epoxy bedding. This is gonna be hopefully the best stock to barreled action mating surface that I've put together to date. And then we're going to paint this stock. We're gonna do some priming, painting. I've got something pretty cool in mind for that. And that's gonna finish the stock. We'll put it together, we'll do some shooting, and then we'll talk about just how accurate 6x47 can be. I've got additional builds planned as well. I've got a 6x47 barrel set aside for this rifle platform, and then we'll look at who knows what else. So if you have ideas, please drop a comment and let me know, I'll put that in the suggestion box. This has been a ton of fun. I'm really excited about this rifle and I can't wait, but I have to, and so do you. But make sure that you're subscribed so that you catch the rest of the series. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the content I've got coming up. Also, links down in the video description. I'm on Patreon and I've got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. Any support that you show is most appreciated. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.